And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful, it is CP Lies Day. Yes, the inflation report came out. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at actually checking in on the bond market as bond yields are putting in uh, nice green girthy candles to the upside. What does that tell me? There is more ban more demand for bonds, right? Money coming out of stocks. Back into the stock market, uh, back in the bond market, as yields did come down. And uh, just want to check back in on kind of our macro target here for the bond market, which was actually hit. And uh, we did get a 4.9% uh, on the 10 year yield. And I think the next level up, I think we can move this up here to uh, this guy. And what am I seeing right now for the 10 year? We'll check out the two year and the 30 in a second. We'll check out some meme coins. We'll check out the dollar. We'll take a look at NASDAQ. Uh, go over a lot of stuff here today. And what was the report today? The general gist of the market after the Fed minutes came out was, uh, well, Joe Biden today in his uh, meeting in front, uh, I think the meeting was with the Prime Minister of Japan said, basically, we're looking for rate cuts in July, so not at the next meeting. And, um, and if they don't come in July, well, they're probably not going to come in November. And that could, you know, that could mean maybe they're going to raise rates. Um, but essentially, um, hoping for that, um, hoping for that rate cut coming out in July. July, July, July. So what happened with inflation here? Came out hotter than expected. So the expectation was 3.4, we got 3.5. Core inflation, 3.7, we got 3.8. And core inflation, month over month, 0.3 to 0.4. CP lie, um, anyway, inflation month over month came out from 0.3 to 0.4. So all around the board, higher than expected, which not only did the bond market get a bit of a boost today, but so did the um, so did what is our good old friend's name? Uh, Dixie, Dixie, and the bond market. I do want to check out T TLT, which uh, this is the twenty-year Treasury iShares uh, bond, uh, the Black Black Rocks bond fund, right? Taking a dump. Um, I don't know why the twenty-year is taking a hit, but we did have a bit of a lower target on this. Curious to see if that does end up getting hit. Um, I think I'd be a buyer at that uh, sweep of the range low right there. And yeah, interesting there. The two year coming in at 4.9 on the weekly. Look at that weekly chart. Just massive green candles to the upside. And looks like we did hit our first target. Um, just curious what a FIB extension would give us here. I'm going to get rid of these horizontal support and resistances here. Make the chart a little cleaner. And notice declining volatility along the green 55. And we're getting a bit of an explosion here to the upside. Short term target for the two year. So yeah, just put your money in the bonds, guys. Put your money in the bonds. The safe, the safe hold banks. Yes. Where your money is safe. So dollar going up. Two year going up, four year going up. And where would the target be on this one? I'm gonna take this extension here. Volatility is low. We expect expansion from this area. And interesting uh, to see if we do come back and tag this trend line long-term, I guess the parabolic move would take you up to that 4236 at 8%. Don't think that's gonna happen uh, on the 10 year. But I do think we have a shot, a shot, a shot for 5.63. 30 year coming in at 4.69. We did hit the uh, measure move target off of that. And it looks like it's gonna go for more here on the 10 year. So as bond yields increase, oh, that's why. Bond yields increase, TLT goes down. Um, TLT goes down, oh yeah. We're going to take a look at also the real world asset sector sector, because apparently that's the new trend. Real world assets. BlackRock has launched their real world asset fund. And uh, apparently that's going to be the next new shiny, bright object in the land of cryptocurrency when 
uh, it comes to opportunity. I, I do like the narrative. I, um, I, I don't know if the hype is here for whatever particular reason, but I would be looking for a bit of a rejection um, at this pivot right here, if we are going to reject, um, you know, at the 618 right there. Let's see. So 30 year coming in at 4.69. And um, yeah, that's it for the bond market. Let's jump into Bitcoin. Uh, so when bond yields go up, typically a bearish sign for stocks, right? Money, uh, you know, people are looking for safety. People People saying, oh, crap, uh, something's about to hit the fan. What's going to hit the fan? I don't know. Is it geopolitical risk? Is it uh, wars in Palestine? Is it wars uh, over there in Russia and Ukraine, which you don't really hear much about now? Um, you don't really hear much about it. And I would say this, though. Um, you know, uh, Dow Jones is leading the party to the downside right now. Uh, Spy is, you know, getting picked up here and uh, potentially putting in a top. I wouldn't mind to see a little tap down to that green 55. And I'm going to move on to my next chart here. Checking in on NASDAQ on the shorter term time frames. I would say this, though, this does look like uh, some accumulation range right here. And with a shot back uh up at this diagonal, we are holding the support level on NASDAQ. So that's bullish for tech stocks. Um, and all around uh, dollar target. Let's see what Dixie looks like on the daily time frame. And uh, yeah, when, you know, US. So, sorry, bond yields are going up. So there's less demand. Sorry, I, I, I totally blew that one. Uh, looks like a bit of an inverted head and shoulders. And if we do break above this trend line, I would say the dollar is going to get a rip to that 1618, which is uh, pretty, pretty much in line there. Um, bear with me. Um, yes, my assistant Dana just Got to answer a quick message here. Uh, I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses. And I'm bringing you this video because I'm going to give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto traders dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Quick message here for my assistant and back into the charts. Okay, so Dixie and what do we have here? Low volatility and an explosion off the green 55 as all the moving averages are now above each other. So how far could this move go? We've tried to, you know, I would at least say up to this trend line and Dixie goes up. I wonder what gold is doing today. I just for kicks want to check in on gold and see if I can get it up here real quick. I forget which chart we are on for gold. Oh, gold, oh no, my gold, my gold's dipping back down after making a swing, shot back up to, now I don't feel like this is the correct chart. This is just a gold spot. Uh, I wanna look at AUG, Let's see if I can find it, AUG all or is it a -U -E g u a g u g u futures oh there's a silver futures how about a u g and gold futures just just to that didn't help me out at all that did not help me out at all that's apple stock um well, we might have to check in on gold, but gold is coming in at 1957, silver at 2413. 
And uh, from a weekly perspective, I haven't checked in on these in a while. This is where you would expect a bit of a continuation bounce. When the dollar goes up, typically risk assets go down and that includes gold and silver. Uh, you know, they play inverse to the dollar. To me that, you know, on a weekly time frame, looks like a nice little top. Looks like we swept the top side of the range once again. And now getting popped back into the range. Not exactly your hope of peace and prosperity for gold. Um, yep. All right. Moving it on to Bitcoin. Good old Bitcoin. There is the hot list. I'm going to check one more list here for gold. Ah, there it is. I think that's what I was looking for. There's the real gold price. 2300 Okay. Reaching up for our target at about 2468 And I don't know what I was looking at. That must have been some kind of a gold trust. Something along those lines. But that's exactly what you don't want to see now. If gold breaks down back below 20,076, that would be your uh, indicator to let those positions go. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. On the other side, silver looking a lot weaker than gold and just barely cresting up upon the range. But if you do see something like this for silver, where we pop up here, regain uh, or you know take out the highs and do a little lower high dance and back down, very similar to what we're going to talk about on Bitcoin right now, which we have been goosing the odds in the favor of the bulls. Yes, Bitcoin is continuing to make those higher highs and higher lows on a daily time frame. And let me pull that up for you right now as well to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, whoops. Higher highs and higher lows. The name of the game on the daily time frame for Bitcoin. And we have been suggesting that my entire order has been filled. Has been filled. I guess I'll take a look at that when I'm done. Um, and next up here, what do we got going on here? We've got uh, higher highs and higher lows and a nice little ascending triangle and a what I would consider a bit of a shakeout here and uh, opportunity to you know, for, for Bitcoin to pick itself up by its bootstraps. And essentially, as long as we're making those higher lows on the daily time frame, you do have a higher high here. And uh, that looks good for continuation. And our upside target uh, coming in off the 1618, which depends on how tight you want to draw it. But uh, I'd say the short term target on Bitcoin, if volatility expands and momentum does remain crossed to the upside, which today will cross down below 70, excuse me, 69,337. Uh, if we do see that uh, remain to the upside. Now, to be fair, this, this does look like it wants to uh, roll back over. It does need to get back above, which we're above it right now. You know, this is a bit of a bullish formation and, you know, for... Bitcoin to come down, test the 0.5 and then get the lift off. You know, I would personally like to see something like that a little bit more. Um, and uh, I think something a little more damaging to the soul, because that's what the market makers are looking to do. They're looking to damage people. They're looking to they're looking to take your coins, sir. They're looking to take your coins. And um, what that would look like to me, uh, the most, you know, the most pain would be, OK, bang you know, maybe up here and then do do and then come back and test this trend line somewhere around 63,000, something like that uh, would not be out of the cards. And we'll have to, you know, everything depends upon this week's closure, what the stock market does, what the dollar does. Make sure you like and subscribe if you are not already. And, um, you know, join us for the journey as we're going through Bitcoin every single day. And I do want to bring up Ethereum as I think Ethereum is doing something a bit interesting. When I look at the ETH BTC chart, ETH BTC, Ethereum Bitcoin on Binance, and just kind of using this as a thermometer for the altcoin market, 
And, you know, we were in a May 21 to April 24, uh, almost call it three year. How many weeks? How many weeks is that? Uh, that consolidation was. And from, yeah. We're talking about 154 weeks. So almost two and a half years. Um, kind of a massive consolidation massive consolidation for ETH Bitcoin. And what is it doing? It's sweeping the range lows once again. Maybe I should draw this a little more accurately so the lines exactly match up on the weekly time frame from this pivot right here and this pivot right here. And to me, I mean, to me, it looks like, you know, if this isn't a breakdown retest, which is when price action, you know, breaks down, retests, kind of uh, does the same thing all over. We need to get back above this level, not 0.5871, back above there. And uh, things are really gonna get bullish in my opinion, um, or just back above this pivot here at not 0.5358. 5358, uh, that would be very, very good for the entire altcoin market in general. So remember, when ETH Bitcoin is going down, that means that uh, Bitcoin is outperforming Ethereum. And when ETH Bitcoin is going up, that means Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin. Again, we use this as a thermometer for the general market. And um, looking at the four hour time frame here, uh, we have outlined this uh, area way back here uh, because there was a nice cluster of candles here. Maybe it was on the 12 hour. There was a nice bright, maybe it was on the daily. Section, uh, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, yeah, that's the last major node right there that has not been recovered um, is, is actually down here. So I, I wonder if, if it does rip uh, a bit more to the downside, but needless to say, that's kind of my land uh, land in the sand, uh, line in the sand. As long as we're above this box, uh, I'm gen generally gonna stay bullish. Below the box, bearish. Below the box, bearish um, any kind of a sweep into this area I would consider probably a major buying opportunity for most of the altcoins um, so back on a Bitcoin as I finish up my thoughts here and what do we see on the chart so daily momentum is up 12 hour is putting in a nice green uh, blue vector candle about to print not not completed yet um, but you would expect, um, you know, at some point we do return back to that blue vector candle as well as this one back here. Um, well, you know, not necessarily, but at some point in time, you know, you can see this was a massive area of interest, uh, all this cluster back here. So if we do break out um, and, you know, get the fake out, the pump and then the dump, interesting bond market today, interesting bond market. Um, bond yields go up when interest rates go up. Um, we had high inflation, right? So maybe people are forecasting more of rate hikes versus, um, you know, rate cuts. And that was kind of the, uh, I think back in January this year, the Fed was pricing in like six rate cuts, then it was three and uh, now I believe it's, you know, more in line somewhere, somewhere around two rate cuts. And if we don't get those cuts by the end of the year, well, it's, you know, no cuts, no butts. You remember that saying, right? Um, anyways, back into the chart here. And again, a beautiful bounce off the green 55 for the 12 hour time frame. So if we can flip the momentum back to the upside above 72,000, that would look good. For this just being a bit of a shakeout, you know, a breakout, shakeout, and then continuation to the upside. Uh, let's check in on the two day. What does the two day look like? Two day is going to be crossing in one day in four hours. Momentum will flip back to the upside above 69,449. So we're currently in position there as well. 
Um, and you know, is this a pennant or is it a range? I, I'm uh, call it what you want to call it. Um, with declining volatility, even with any kind of a sweep down here. And again, we went over the production cost for Bitcoin, which will be increasing. You know, the Bitcoin having, uh, Bitcoin having coming around very, very quickly. Bitcoin having uh, coming in eight. Eight hours, 22, eight days, 22 hours, eight days, 22 hours. And I swear the, the clock, I don't swear, um, the clock does seem to move uh, day to day. So is it going to be on 420? Is it going to be on April 19th? Who knows? Who knows? But that would be pretty funny. Speaking of 420 and Mr. Doggy Coin, uh, everybody's favorite meme coin, the meme coin thermometer, as they call it up 5.9 percent and this is looking bullish so far so good and uh, we did get bullish way back here once it broke the long-term down sloping trend line i uh, wish i would have held all the longs uh, that would have been nice but um, i have to say I, I let some of them go and uh, you know fortunate for some clients they're they're still in mr doggy coin enjoying this upside uh, upside potential is ever increasing as uh, meme coins are still shining brighter and brighter. This was the number one meme coin and something interesting about doggy coin is it has never not made a new all time high in a bull market. In fact, uh, every single time, you know, you have seen it actually hit its 1618 target, which would put doggy coin all the way up here at about Two dollars and fifty-three cents. If you're using candle bodies, and if you're using wicks, which I believe all the past prior cycles used the wicks, and hit that four two three six at coming in at two ninety two. So hey, I'm I'm banking on a dollar. You know, probably going to get some sell pressure around there. Um, other than that, um, I believe it is going to be onwards and upwards for this beautiful dog, Mr. Doggy, and. Uh, Hopefully we can all just be laughing to the bank as our doggy coins and our meme coins are running to the moon. All right, last up, real world assets. So if doggy coins printing a green one today, 6% to the upside, then you would suspect, which by the way, uh, Mr. Mark, I am going to give you a shout out here because I know you're looking at this doggy coin. Um, Remember, weak pounces come up to the th to, 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 to the 382, and we are not even there yet, right? So weak bounce up to the 382 at 31 bucks. I think there's plenty of upside on this one. Uh, taking a look quickly at Mr. Ave running into some sell pressure. Uh, <laughs> this one's going to look really good for a, a huge rip to the upside if we can just clear um pretty much this last high um you know take it level by level but uh any kind of a closure back above 154 and the thing should should get some extension volatility is still expanding uh we might be rolling over here below 135 on the weekly we still have plenty of time this looks like a nice pennant as well a pennant that has broken out a pennant that has broken out to the upside. I probably would draw it like this. I probably draw it like this, right? Something like this. Three touches makes a trend. Remember that saying if you haven't uh, already written it down. Well, how many touches do we have? Well, that would have been your third touch. We broke out, retested, and that should be, uh, you know, continuation with the stops back back below uh, the prior wick low. We do have the higher lows intact. We got the higher high. And, you know, if this one does break out, I'm looking for a retest of the high at 157. Um, momentum is to the upside. I do like the jewel, which is uh, quite uh, erect here on the daily time frame, pointing straight up 12 hour is gonna pull back down and print some let's see bearish divergence yes or no so we got a higher high here right compared to this high and the r size making a higher high so not bad okay this one right here 
And, you know, a lot of times the first pass up to the bullish control zone, you get a rejection after you've been away from it for some time. Um, four hour is holding the 50 percentile. So as long as that four hour does continue onwards and upwards with any kind of a higher low here on the four hour time frame above 128, I'd look for some nice continuations uh, on this one and expansion to happen right from this pivot. So that does look good as well. Uh, all right, real world assets really quick. Um, shout out to banter on this one. Um, they brought these up to my attention here today. And uh, one of them strong looking, looking pretty strong here is Mr. O.M. Real world assets, if you're going to tokenize everything like Mr. BlackRock himself is saying, well, that's, that is, um, you know, one of the plays there. Ondo, and I know BlackRock is a big investor in this one. Uh, token Fi, Token Fi. Uh, by the way, these are available on Mexi. There is a link in the description below. And, uh, you know, getting a nice... Pull back to the 618, you got a nice diagonal here. So uh, this is where you would expect a continuation push. Momentum has just crossed up from the critical zone and that does look fairly good for um, a bit of a bounce and run. And um, yeah, bouncing off the purple 200, you can see we bounced it off right here and the question is are we going to bounce sweep it one more time and then go um that would be my question and as long as we're in the bearish control zone well you know i'd, I'd be waiting on the four hour time frame for this to get out maybe retest and then uh go for another swing back at the bullish control zone you are going to have several drives of hidden bullish divergence if this does confirm as a higher low and how would you confirm it? Well, just a closure back above this level right here, um, right here at uh, 1430, 1428. Um, that would look good. Boston, we got declining volatility and well, do we have? Yes, declining volatility off the green 55. Uh, you'd be entering here, stop right below here and looking for continuation. Um, you know, more conservative stop would be here and uh, targeting the range high on this one. And just curious to see, did we take a shot down to the not 0.5? Uh, yes, not all the way to the 382. So maybe one more swipe down and then she goes for it. Um, just looking at this from a daily perspective, um, you've got a pretty, you know, inverted chart here and you know, at some point, uh, we are going to have that mean reversion. And I'd probably be more interested in this one as um, it comes back down into this support level. If we can flip this and show this as support uh, somewhere around uh, not 0.41, that would be interesting to me. Um, this one, obviously taking it on the chin. I don't even know what this is. IX swap uh, doesn't look like health and prosperity to me. Um, I'm going to take that one off the list. Rio is another interesting one. I've, um, girlfriend's from Brazil. So, you know, uh, I was checking this coin out early <laughs> and, uh, where would the major points of interest come in after putting in a nice, you know, uh, heavy volume candle like this, as long as we're below this area, I'd say pressure's onto the downside. So just looking for the next higher low to come in somewhere around 171 um, and uh, perhaps get some interest in that zone. Sea pools and uh, it looks like it's recovered this major vector candle. Nice long opportunity right here. Um, and um, yeah, easy, you know, easy way to manage the risk there. I will pro post this trade in the, in the Discord. So yeah. Um, just in case there is a link in the description below. Um, and then Dusk. I've heard about this one for some time. This is not, um, you know, Moonlight, Moon Shadow, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Twilight Zone. 
vampires aren't coming out, but you can see a strong bounce will come up to the 0.5 of the 618. Uh, we're getting a nice rejection there. And the question is, are we back to the 236 or is the 382 going to hold? So something like this, uh, especially on the weekly time frame, if you do see a closure back below here, definitely looking at some downside first. It does look like it is going to print uh, some bearish divergence, perhaps. It doesn't have enough price history, so hard to chart this one, but uh, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure, again, you like the video, share it with a friend or a family, um, and just consider um, if you're, you know, if you're noticing your trading fees are high, uh, Mexi is our preferred exchange. The link is in the description below, and I look forward to seeing you guys here soon in the next one. Take care.